And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have my I have three of my good brothers here. We have <laughs> we have the ma the man who hates Sydney Rhodes more more than the rest of us, good brother Mace. <laughs> yes, definitely. If I went up to Sydney, then uh, yeah, I'd hate their roads more than Melbourne. But luckily, I live in Melbourne, which is <clears throat> a far superior place. Mm -hmm. Use the frog in my throat. <laughs> Kermit's visiting. <clears throat> the 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 man of a, the man of a hundred thousand contracts and our and the handsome devil of the Geek Watch, good brother JT. Pleasure as always. <laughs> And the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadare Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence. Good brother Xanatrix. I'm such a bane of his existence, he even fucked up the word existence. Yes, I did. <laughs> this time he did fuck he did fuck the opening yet again. Yay! <laughs> Haven't you ever heard of someone speaking anguish? <laughs> I have. I've also heard of someone speaking anguish. This sounds like you today. <laughs> <laughs> so we are we are no strangers to variety here here in the Geek Watch as as well as in the monastery. Will we are we do not shy away from co from covering from covering materials when it comes to an when it comes to anime, manga, video games, tabletop games. Pretty sure we'll cover. Pretty sure we'll cover board games in one of these days. We just haven't done it yet. As well as well as just regular old television. But it's been quite a while since we covered something comics related. And a lot of that is due, a lot of that is due to the fact that it's it's hard to get enthused with the big two when it comes to cape shit, largely because of the largely because of the fact that. The that Marvel and DC have are not exactly flying high, but you'd think they would with all the popularity of the films. Mm. And I have I have the receipts to prove that kind of thing because I because I get I get the sales numbers just as just as everybody else does monthly. Um, when you can find them, that is. It's not Anyone the, tried finding DC sales numbers recently? You know, Tom Taylor. Hey, you want to find your own sales numbers? <laughs> well, when it comes to grant, granted, granted, the numbers that I get cap off at at the um, at fiftieth place, and there is the fact that it ca that it counts that it counts manga within that within that category, and that is suffocating the top the top ten when it comes to sales. As as I as I think I think I had pre I think I had predicted because I said DC Marvel if you keep fucking up somebody's somebody's going to take advantage. So can't <clears> say I didn't can't say I didn't warn them. But when it com but but there are but that doesn't mean that there's shortage of shortages of character to to discuss to discuss. And I think I think we I think I can speak for all of us in that in that we grew up and we grew up being fans in some capacity or another of Spider Man. Whether whether that was through the comics or through the or through Spider Man the, or through or through the um night or through the nineties cartoon or for or for the really deep cut among us, um, through the to, through the Tokusatsu series. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Which, incidentally, is a um is a fever dream that I that I can't help but enjoy. Guilty pleasures. Everybody has some. And, you know, for this for the same reason, I can enjoy samurai pizza cats for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> Oh come on! But that—that's—that's that's a an outlier there. Oh, Samurai so. Pizza Cats was a great show, so badly dubbed without a decent script or anything. Well, that's because they didn't have a script. Ah, I know. 
I know. I've heard the history behind it. It's the same history that goes on with. Oh, now, now I forget, forget the anime now. Ghost stories. Um, no, those who hunt elves. Hmm. And uh, another anime that was dubbed without pretty much a script or anything handy. They just went, "Hey, let's wing it." I think in both Sweet. cases they w they winged it because because the studio involved forgot to send the script. Hmm. Even, Quite possibly. And, of course, with ghost stories, well, the studio involved just didn't care. They're like, do whatever you want. So they did. <laughs> Wait. But, when it, but, we've, but Spider-Man is a character we've, we've seen through ups and downs, we've seen through ups and downs over the years, up to and including the hyperfixation they ha they seem to have on on making the on making the care uh, on making the characters suffer co constantly and consistently fuck you Joe Quesada. oh we going we're gonna be talking about that at some point are we um, hopefully not we're because <laughs> the subject today is not entire not ex on entirely spider man yeah. well it is tangentially related however there, well, it, it will be mentioned. Yeah, but there there have been t there have been times where where cer where certain alternate characters have been presented as a spider as a Spider Man. I think one of the one of the more infamous ones until un until until he went through a name change was Ben Riley, aka the Scarlet Spider, who is not mm -hmm. is not is not a terrible character. He just has the he just has the unfortunate stigma of being associated with the Clone Saga, as is uh, the quote unquote brother Kane. Yeah, but the we might we might end up getting to the Clone Saga in detail one of these days. But it is one of those stories that had a decent idea that got extended way past the point where it should have, and has been replayed at least three times. Mm -hmm. And and I don't I and I never understood why anybody would want to try again because nobody liked the Clone Saga. Nope. I mean, they were tr they were trying to. I think I think a title like Maximum Clonage should sh should speak volumes, especially since behind the scenes, as popular as Maximum Carnage was, the right the writing team hated it. Well, just like everything else in the the era of the '90s, uh, the Clone Saga or Max, Maximum Clonage was one of those storylines that was spread out over about, if I remember correctly, three or four different Spider-Man titles at the time. Yeah, there was, mm. a, there was and, definitely that. And, yeah, a lot of writers that were writing on multiple books, such as uh, Amazing Spider-Man, Spectacular Spider-Man, Spider-Man. And there's one more I'm forgetting. But, like, when you had four mainline books all running at the same time, trying to sell p parts of the same story, of course the writers are getting frustrated because they can't keep up with what's going where. Which was one of the many reasons why the Clone Saga is as hated as it is. I think the, I think the other thing is... The big two organi organize their writers and editors in a se in a series of um, fiefs. Mm. Really, I just threw the, thought they threw darts at the dartboard and said, "This is what you're writing this week." Well, no, well the the thing that I'm the thing that I'm getting at is you have you have a you have a you have people compartmentalized in terms of what the, what character they're writing on, or what you or what set of characters they're writing on. And there's very, and it's very rare that there's that there's um in intercommunication between between those groups. And if there is, well, well, you're relying on not you're relying on '90s communication. And what are you gonna do? Call each other until the phone blow until the phone literally blows up again? Hmm. Hmm. Internal communication systems would have been a great thing back then. But it was the early days of the internet, and well, it was you were mainly gonna be doing it by phone or by mail. Even it, 
And even if all of the writers and editors were located just in New York, you'd st you'd still end up having a logistical nightmare. Hmm. Or even worse, trying to do everything by fax machine. No, I am perfectly fine with abandoning the fax machine. Thank you. <laughs> but that was one of the options back then. The the greatest thing to ever happen to a fax machine was the ending of Office. What? Well, not the ending, but that that infamous scene in Office Space. <laughs> yes. However, today, but we are not here to talk about the Clone Saga or One More Day. Or the or the or or the humiliation fetish that's being explored through Peter Parker over the years. We're here to talk about one of the, one of the more divide one of the more divisive and confusing en entries entries within within Spider Man's um within Spider Man's greater greater canon. As ladies and gentlemen, I pre I present to you Miles Morales. A crisis of character. Hmm. Now, yes. now, as as I recall, um, Miles or Miles originally showed up back in the Ultimate Universe a, way back in 2011. Correct. And his, his first appearance was in Ultimate Four, Fallout Number Four, which was the end of the first era of the Ultimate Universe, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which included the death of Peter Parker. Yeah, and whoa, yeah, because we haven't had Peter Parker die before. Mm. And. I think I think before we even get into the, get into the nitty gritty of things, we should speak a bit on the Ultimate Universe experiment because that I think was far successful than anyone had predicted it would have been. Mm -hmm. The short version of it is that the Ultimate Universe was an attempt to take a lot of the classic characters and imagine what and imagine what they'd be like if they got started in the modern era. And some some of the some of the ultimate stories did did all right. Some of them were questionable. Um, I put the I put the early days of Ultimate Iron Man in the questionable department. Why is it because of the fact that his entire body is neurons and he can regenerate from nothing by eating meat? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all the vegans would fact... be pissed off. And the fact that he has to drink alcohol to stop from feeling the constant pain his body is always in because it's made of nothing but neurons. Legitimately, teenage teen, teenage Tony starts drinking because it finally stops making him feel pain. If this is supposed to be their nod to Demon in the in a Bottle, that is a very classless nod. Of course, class would get even worse because then you have things like Ultimatum and the Ultimates, where we go into sheer what the fuck territory. Can can you, I you, can I can I praise Ultimate Iron Man for just one thing though? What? Hmm. No, okay, excuse me, a correction. Two things. First, a Statue of Liberty sized Iron Man suit. <laughs> Second, the word capectomy. Uh, for those, for those of you who don't know what a capectomy is, there's another word we call it: decapitation. Capectomy <laughs> just means that it's surgically precise. Uh, uh. I I feel like I'm praising with yes. dams, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> There, but um, first off, first off, the the main way that I even found out about about Miles Morales was when I saw a bunch of snippets, even even in even in my local newspaper, talking that talking about Miles Morales as this new Spider Man, and this and this is where we get to the first problem. The primary focus in a lot of those articles was him being 
him being him being half black, half li half Latino, and gay. Which throw which throwing except, three except, 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 except the third the third part never came to fruition. It never came to it never, it never came to fruition, but it but that got brought up frequently with it with it, within the um, hype train. Which and, is quite, which is quite often done in mainstream media. Mm -hmm. Which, to me, to me always, to me always, str the fact that they were, ev the fact that they were focusing more, the fact that there was more of a focus on that, on that ethnicity part, um, to me was, to me was a warning sign, and I think at the time I said, by do, by doing that, you have effectively screwed this. Ca this character over because you're going to get you're going to get that you're going to get the divisiveness problem because you're going to have people who are who are going to gaslight others if they even if they even criticize the character and you're going and you're going to have those who don't who don't even care who don't even care but want, but want quote unquote representation representation. And you, and you gotta you gotta remember as well that this was 2011. This was before the big push for uh, diversification and representation in all media was a highly debated uh, social topic and also used in news. Mm -hmm. Like this is this is before you have everybody going. You know, uh, you, you must include X Y Z or else you know you're gonna get cancelled or something like this. That cancel culture and everything that we see today. In similar stories like um, uh, *Son of Kal El* issue five, which was put into mainstream media news because the son of Superman came out as gay, even though he actually uh, came out as, bi as bisexual. But you know, let's not get in the way of a good headline. And where groups are really pushing that type, those type of. It, those type of headlines into the mainstream media. A lot of that type of stuff didn't happen back then, which is why this was a bigger deal back then than what it is considered now. Mm -hmm. And it's funny. It's funny that you mentioned um, um, so, um, "Son of Kal El" because of, because of the fact that that book that um, that book had had a bit had a bit of a surge for uh, for a, for about a week. And then, and then it's and then it's right back to bottom to bottom feeding in the in the forties. Yes, the issue five bumped. I think got bumped got bumped up into like seventh spot or something like that. Mm -hmm. But a lot of that again comes from uh, what we know in the comic industry or comic collecting industry as the speculator market, where people are buying mm -hmm. key and specific issues. In hopes of flipping them for profit later, it's like going uh, and picking up an issue one of something. You know, you're buying it on the hopes that it's going to be worth something more one day. Mm -hmm. AKA, you're an idiot and don't know how economics works. Yes. Yes. Let's not forget about all the people who picked up the punchline uh, couple of books that DC put out. Why? Because oh my god, they're replacing Harley Quinn. And that has just not worked out at all. Neither, neither has that. Neither has DC's attempts to turn Harley Quinn into their answer to Deadpool. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, that's a completely different uh, episode, which we'll get to at one point, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to when it comes to like when it comes to Mo when it comes to Miles, I think. I think one of the reasons that I wanted to focus on this on this character in particular is the is the concept of 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 line, of lineage of lineage characters and and the right and wrong way to do it. Cuz here's the the thing that I always find amusing is when it comes to Miles Morales' comics, he has never been he has never been able to do all that well. Despite all, despite all the promotion that he that he ends up getting, when it comes, but but people act, but people actually liked Miles in at in works outside works outside of that. The key, the two key ones that I want to focus on are Into the Spider Verse and the Insomniac Spider-Man games. 
and I think I think part of the reason why it ends up working is the fact that Sp is the fact that um Spider that in those particular ones in Into the Spider Verse you have dimensional fuckery so you have a reasoning for him and you have enough um space for him to be 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 Spidey without ha without having excess baggage whereas in um in the whole thing with Miles Morales we see his or we see his origin for a bit not really but okay um it gra granted the granted the 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 times where you're controlling Miles or Mary J or Mary Jane in the in the PS4 Spider-Man were the weakest parts of the game because it, because it was a case of bad stealth yeah yeah but but in, but in doing so that's where you would see the the origins of Miles Morales whereas the Miles Morales game picks up uh, I think three or six months after the events of Spider-Man mm -hmm. where Miles is started he, he it's like um, it's like Batman year one mm -hmm. it's a fresh Miles he's just getting used to his powers and a lot of the attraction of the game was seeing his life and his culture put on display in the game which was exceptionally well done yeah now, I, I'm not too sure about the, the rest of you gentlemen, and I do apologize to anybody listening who's already sick of my voice on this topic. <laughs> but um, I am extremely familiar as a comic reader with Miles Morales going back to his debut in Ultimate Fallout 4, his own solo series, which is Ultimate Comic Spider-Man, uh, even the Ultimate... Spider-Man comic books that came before it, and uh, Amazing Spider-Man Mainline, mm -hmm. which I own out of nearly one... Th we're getting close to 1,000 issues. I own about about 800 six single issues of, including... Uh, not not including so, uh, side stories and annuals, so I have quite a collection mm -hmm. of, of Spider-Man. But when it comes to Miles Morales as a character from a comic book perspective... A lot of fans didn't were, were upset at first when it happened because one, this was yet another attempt at trying to replace Peter Parker with somebody else. Mm -hmm. uh, but the difference being here was that one, uh, you had Brian Michael Bendis behind the, the creation of the character during a time in his career where people weren't wanting to string him up by, by his gonads for a certain event that we will not mention. But it was also Miles Morales was getting a chance to start in his own book in a separate universe to which they were telling a different version of Spider-Man. Hmm. And when they made the when Marvel made the executive decision to shut down the ultimate imprint in uh, 2015, Miles was the only character who was brought into the mainline Marvel Universe from the Ultimate Universe. And that's when a lot of the, the readers started having issue again, because now all of a sudden we have two Spider-Men in the one universe telling two different sets of stories, but both using the name Spider-Man. Hence, it was becoming more of a, a brand confusion thing. However, the un the main reason that Miles was the character to survive was that his books was the highest selling out of all the Ultimate titles before they cancelled the, the imprint. And it just seems that since they've moved him into the mainline universe, they're having trouble making him fit. It's like they're, they're, they're trying to put a, a square peg into a round hole and going, well, why isn't it working? But then along comes Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, which has really sort of jumped the legitimacy of the character into all sorts of media because fans now are more open to the idea of a multiverse and crossover characters than they were, you know, what are we at now? 22, so seven, ten years ago. 
So hence why you see you're starting to see a little bit of a climb in Miles, but at the same time, it's when Miles works best is when he is not involved in mainline plot lines. And like when he's doing when he's doing his own book in his own universe or the video game or the appearance in the movie, that's where he works best. It's when you try to put him side by side with Peter Parker that everybody starts to complain. And the f- now, granted, having t- having two characters with with the same name, um, I know that I know that some people will bring up the multiple people who have ha- who have used who have used the name Robin or Bat or Batgirl or the Flash. Except, except even even within that, it's made it's made very it's made very cl- it's made very clear who the who the um focus with it within the within those runs is going to be. Hmm. And and you've never had them on in a book or on screen sharing the same name at the same time, unless you're doing a multiverse story. Mm-hmm. Like you never you never had. You know Barry Allen or um, Jay Garrett in a in a book at the same time, unless it was a crossover event. You never had Tim Drake and uh, Damien in the same book under the name of Robin. And well, when well when it comes to when it comes to Robin, for um people who held the, people who held the Robin name end up t- end up taking other names after the fact. Yes. Whether whether that be whether that be Dick becoming Nightwing, um, Tim Dr- Tim Drake becoming Re- becoming um, Red Rock could be Red, Red Robin. Mm. Um, Jason Todd as Red Hood. Mm-hmm. And right now, for and for better or worse, if somebody brings up Robin nowadays, the primary one they're going to be bringing up is um, Damian, Damian Wayne. I think Damien's a little shit, but that's just me. Mm-hmm. And that that's be that's beyond the scope of this. the The point is is the point is is that even with multiple characters who have taken that mantle, there's always there's always get there's going to be one who's going to ultimately be the focus. But with the way Marvel handled um, trying to have Peter and Miles in the same in the same area, you have two you have two char- you have two characters. You have um, you have two characters, who are who, who are supposed to be the quote unquote lead, but it but it's presented as if it's presented as if both of them are the main one instead of one being the primary and one being the secondary. Which, if they had, if they had done, if they had done if they had done something like that, maybe they wouldn't have had that problem. You know the old the old the old master and the student kind of thing. Yeah, like even in other books associated with Spider-Man, uh, uh, like All in the Family. No, that was not, uh, there was one where you, where they went through the alternate universe where Peter has a child, and it was his, his daughter, and she took on the name Spinnerette. Yeah, you know, it, it's one of those things. That, it's something that could have been. Avoided if they didn't try so hard to keep the Spider-Man name with both characters, or in the case of current storylines, three characters now. Mm-hmm. As uh, Mr. Riley is back in the picture, and he is going to be Spider-Man for a little bit before they reboot the book again in two months' time. Yeah, and the the rebooting thing is another issue, and I do I do plan on talking about the status quo problem. At a at a later date, but then then I remember the other um the other argument that I remember some people bringing up to me, which is which is infinite which is inf- which ends up proving our point I- ironically and a in a way to self report kind of way, is Terry McGinnis. <laughs> and the big reason that fall that falls on his face is the fact that Terry McGinnis lit. Occupies Neo Gotham. He is it. He is in a. He is in a completely different spot in the, t- in the t- in the timeline. And he d- and 
while he, while during the cartoon, some some of Batman's some of Bruce Wayne's old villains showed up. Um, it was it they weren't the prime they weren't the primary enemy that he had to deal with. Yet his his rogues gallery consisted of people like like Blight, like Ink, and um, Spellbinder. And granted, Spellbinder was pre was present in the comics, but it was one of those villains that would that would be bounced around. And with and with Batman Beyond or Batman of the Future, depending on which region that you're in, mm -hmm. when you did see characters come back, such as Mister Freeze or even the Joker, for example, they were used to bookmark the end of a story or the end of the adventures of Bruce Wayne's era of Batman. Mm -hmm. They were never brought in to battle Terry specifically. They, they were just there as, okay, here's a reminder of the past, but we're going to give you a conclusion to their story. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll always say that some of the better, one of the best uh, Batman Beyond episodes that I watched was the return of Mr. Freeze, because it actually put a really good and a happy ending to the saga of Mr. Freeze that started in the animated series. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh yeah, and I, f I forgot to I forgot to bring up Shriek when it came to his when it came to his rogues gallery. Ah yes. Um. Uh, which. If none of you have ever heard of Shriek, don't worry. Shriek can't Shriek can't hear it either. That was bad. Yes, it was. And I regret nothing. Of course you don't. You never regret anything, Monk. But the po the the overall point the overall point is the, is the fact that within the within the within the story because of that because of that name confusion, um, you end up you you can't you can't have two you can't have two lead, you can't have two lead roles in that in that same position. If you're get if you're you have to have Batman and Robin, not Batman and Batman. Except once again, I bring out the example of a crossover episode where time travel is involved. Let's not forget the episode of Justice League Unlimited, where we had uh, some of the Justice League go forward into the Neo Gotham era, and you had the Bruce Wayne Batman at his peak meeting Terry McGinnis mm -hmm. and meeting and meeting his older self, which was absolutely hilarious. Oh yes, that was very that was quite nice. Yeah. But I th I think um I think time travel should be treated as the exception, not the rule. Correct. Yes, yes, yes. Because well, with time travel or dimension travel, that is your opportunity to to make as many ass pulls as you as you would like because I think I think most audiences will will go will go along with it when you're do when you're doing when you when times or dimensions are involved. Yes, which is why Into the Spider Verse was the hit that it was. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Now, when it come, sorry, carbonation. <laughs> I would I would say I would say I would say the I would say the other problem is when you have when you have a when you have a character who. Power, power wise and look wise isn't too far removed from from the from the original that ends up mudding the waters even further because while while um while miles while miles certainly prefers a more black and red aesthetic if you look at a lot of the suit designs that he's that he's had over that he's had over the years um it it a lot of them just come off as a as a palette swap of the of um of Peter. Well, sure, he's never he's never done he's never done something like the re, like the red and like the red and blue red and blue that's that Peter has and is and will always be the iconic look. Uh. But isn't but 
but there's but the problem the problem is there's nothing to there's not enough to sit to distinguish his his look beyond beyond the colors whereas you look you you look at the you look at the various um you you look at not I could just bring up the various robins or the or the various batgirls or even, or even, even the different, the different looks when it comes to the Flash. But just, con just consider Bruce and Ter and Terry when they, when they've held the mantle of Batman. That not only do you have a different look, you have completely different kit. Yeah. And. His appear his appearance his appearance in the in the in the fo in the follow up to PS4 Spider Man was most definitely trying to a was definitely trying to emphasize a diff a different playstyle, especially with all the electricity effects that he that he ends up having. But overall, but overall, you have. The you have the issue of of the of the fact that what that power that power wise how much of a difference is there? Well, even, with, ju even just how powers are utilized. Well, that's that's the thing. There, there is a baseline of the, the Spider-Man powers that Miles has. He has the spider sense. He has the ability to create web fluid. Um, he's got the adhesion to walls and everything else. But he has powers beyond what Peter has. He, like you said, he has the electricity effects. He also has the invisibility as well, the camouflage effect. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's sort of like trying to make him... Spider-Man, but quote unquote better, in a way. Mm. But again, he that, does have that, some. But again, that, but again, that that can that can also come down from, like the origins being different. You gotta remember that that the, the Peter Parker that we are familiar with in mainline Spider-Man titles is still the one from like the 1950s where he was bit by a radioactive spider. Whereas Miles is one that was bitten by a genetically altered spider, and you can, it can also come down to the breed of spider as well that was used, and what abilities can be done from them. Mm -hmm. So that's that's sort of a variation in fact of cause and effect. Yeah, I mean there was there was the whole talk of the of the venom blasts, but if I'm be, but if I'm being honest, um. <laughs> It's just electro bolts. One, it's one, it's electro bolts, and two, um, how's that? How two? How are you going to distinct anybody? Anybody who looks at uh, look looks at how they describe it as bioelectricity, they'd go, "That's Spider Woman." <laughs> True. And i'm not i'm not saying get i'm not saying get i'm not saying get rid of it but it is something you're gonna have to you're go you're going to have to address because the key the key thing the key thing with this is um nah, is not being is making is establishing a separate identity and granted um ben riley his his particular kit wasn't too different from parker's but you can but you can but they passed the eye. But they both passed the eye test. You're not going to confuse Ben Riley with Peter Parker when they're in co when they're in costume. You mean the silhouette test? Yeah. Hang on. Um. Oh. And we. And within within that, I think it's a, it is ver, it is very much a, is very much a case of need of needing to needing to establish a separate identity, which brings which brings up another issue, and that is Rogues Gallery. 
like who who with Sp- with Spider Man, there's plenty there's plenty of pe- there's plenty of people you could consider within his rose gallery to be his opposite in a micro or macro sense. Obviously, the big one. Obviously, the big one is pick w- pick which one of the goblins you want to go with this week, or just pick ha- just pick half of the Osborn family. Um. Alter- alternatively, the- alternatively, you could you could go with any number of that rogues gallery, but with with Miles. Most of I think most of the time that the, that he's had any sort of rogues gallery, it's either been D, it's either been D listers or or um or some or some ver, some variant of exi- of the existing rogues gallery. Yeah, and that that was the same in the early comic book days as well, because essentially Miles became the Spider Man of Peter's world. In the, in the Ultimate series, so he didn't really have that many unique villains to take on. And then once he got merged into the mainline universe, the same problem has occurred, where the same villains that Peter is taking after is the ones that Miles will be facing off against as well. The only difference being in one character, and it's only been one that's come into more recent stories, which has been the Assessor. And that's the first time I've seen sort of a, a version of a character or a villain that is unique to Miles' story. But they're starting to integrate that into the current Peter Parker slash Ben Riley storyline as well. So I'm about to blow that one to bits. Mm-hmm. So the, there's not really... But, but again, it's a lot of the, the issues, as I said before, come from Miles having... Having to to come in and being a part of another character's world. Mm-hmm. It's like how do you how do you create new characters specifically for Miles when you have Peter Parker in the same city and the Avengers nearby and everybody else? Well, not so much the Avengers; they're up in the North Pole in the head of, in the body of a celestial for some reason. Mm-hmm. Comics are weird these days. Comics have always been weird. <laughs> And I, I will I will say that the weirdest modern comic, what no matter who's making it, is not going is not going to be nearly as weird as, and as any com- as any comic from the from the from the Silver Age, you know where everybody was doing the drugs. Back when you could talk about that. Back when Superman sneezed away an entire solar system. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That is a Silver Age thing Superman has done. Literally sneeze and away goes the solar system. Um, he's a monster. I mean, if I remember, he also had like Technically, technically, ownership of a few planets due to some of the stupid brainwashing things you saw in Superman's best friend and stuff where he was suddenly king of another planet. But the Silver Age was just fucking stupid sometimes, so (laughs) the less said the better. Oh yeah, oh yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Oh yes. And hang on, hang on a hang on a moment. I'm ha- I'm having to deal with uh, um the bu- the bullshit of the, the bullshit of the permission system in the in this thing. Um. Hello. 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 Hey, Hello. Hey. Hello, Hero Geek. Welcome, welcome to the shit show. <laughs> oh my god, I figured this shit out. It's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Th- um. It is. Thanks for thanks for thanks for stop thanks for stopping by on the, on this. Um. The f- we've mostly we've mostly been going into the the one of the bit one of the primary issues that we that we've been discussing regarding a character like Miles which is a ident- a um identity issue 
A I severe mean, one. I.e., what? Because I'm. Earth, you weren't here for it, but earlier I had, earlier I had brought up um, Ben Riley in comparison, and the fact that you're not going to confuse the two if you put them up in a, if you put them up in a line. No, 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 you won't. Um, the well, I mean, aside from the obvious ones, I think one of the biggest issues with Miles is that, I mean. Also, the fact that he doesn't have his own villain. I mean, maybe he has, what, um, Prowler, and that's pretty much it, right? But wasn't Prowler a Spider-Man villain before that, anyway? I think Pro Prowler, for, to me, has always struck me as one of those one of those names that gets taught that gets tossed about when the when the when a writer needs a vi needs a villain but can't use one of the bigger names without pissing off a, another group of writers and editors. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, do do I mean you know you know uh, that tweet that I made that um oh god that that thing just yeah that <laughs> that started this whole thing like that tweet I made just pissed so many so many wokies up just off uh, it was ridiculous. I rem I remember seeing that I remember I remember going, how much you want to bet that none of those people ever read the comic they just they just watched the movie. Mm hmm Yeah, yeah. I'm not making that um, bet because that's a fool's bet, and I don't feel like losing money because I don't work at Marvel. No, no, but I I was unprepared for the amount of flag that I got for that tweet. I was not ready because I didn't think my tweet was that bad. I really didn't. I wasn't I wasn't insulting or bad mouthing Miles in any way. I was just saying that he could be improved. And I, I just, I couldn't believe just how much hate I got from that tweet. I, it, it caught, it, 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 it caught me off guard. I'm like, whoa, yeah. Like, I'm not, I'm not insulting the character. I'm not. But, God, I just, you know, and people, I don't know if you saw some of the retweets and some of the responses. I don't know if you went I through them. I did, and and I saw some. I saw some. I saw a lot of people. Um, a lot of people were were overly were overly attached to the to the not, to make to making whole cloth claims about some of the alternative names that you had had presented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like how how me how many how many loops do you have to jump through? Before, like, really, you just, you just you really have to, like, go through that much just to make it seem like I'm being racist. Really, really. Have you ever heard? This is an. This is a. Um. This is a bit of a proverb that I use. That I use quite a bit in my work. Um. Those who go out looking for witches see them everywhere. Mm hmm. Mm. And yeah. Mm hmm. So, like, you know. The names that I came up with were were Night Spider and I think Specter Spider, and then one of them was Phantom Spider, right? Yeah. And I I, I came to those names through logical through you know logical means. I'm meaning Phantom and Specter because Miles Morales has the ability to 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 become invis invisible, mm -hmm. right? And Night Spider because well his costume is black and 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 red. I thought that made sense, so it wasn't because it wasn't because he was a black guy. I... Yeah, uh. I we've I remember I remember when the care when um everybody was talking about his heritage way back in 2011, and I had I had said and I I brought this up I brought this up earlier tonight that. When that when that was the focus, I, my mindset was, you just screwed over this. You just screwed this character over before he even started, because because of the fact that you're going to get people who that who are going are going to use that as a shield for any sort of critique. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Um, oh. in the words of Volta in the words of Voltaire, I have only uttered one prayer in my life. Lord, make my enemies ridiculous. God granted it. Yeah, yeah. And you know, and, and okay, so 
a, a lot of um a lot of the arguments were well why can't there be two spider-man why you, you know you don't have a problem you don't have a problem when it's a white character yes i do i have a problem with i have a problem with both um with both uh barry allen and and uh wally west being flash at the same time i have a pro you know i have a problem with any if, if it's done with any character it's not just with spider-man i i don't like ben riley and, and and peter parker at the same time i don't like that either at, at the you very know. least with ben riley they there was the they they were smart enough to call him the scarlet spider mm -hmm. um and but they, they have but they have this obsession with calling miles Morales as, miles Morales also spider-man like no no it, well thing is though nowadays every he every every superhero is a mantle now like like everything's a mantle like captain america's a mantle hulk is a mantle thor's a mantle uh, the claim can be made that they're mantles but that will that that will never stick not when not when you're dealing with dec not when you're dealing with decades of it not being it mm -hmm. um yeah the the only place that tends to stick and this is very loosely because even then it's not sticking well might be batman and again, very loosely, because mm -hmm. very few people liked Asriel as Batman. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was the uh, Asriel as Batman was a special case because yes, the right the writers of Nightfall or Night Saga, depending on where you are, had outright had outright said that they that they built that story upon asking asking and answering a question. And I'm, par I'm paraphrasing the original quote, but it was, Is our hero too tame for the 90s? Mm -hmm. And Azrael was meant, to, was meant to be one of the potential answers, you know, given, giving people a character that could be considered more 90s, quote-unquote. And of, of course, of, I, think they, I think they kind of knew that Azrael as Batman was, go was going to backfire, and I think that was part of the point. Yeah. Well... And we we see that the idea of Batman as a title or office to hold is something that has been explored, especially more recently, um, with events such as uh, Blackest Night, where Dick had to step into into the cowl for a while, or with the introduction of Batman Incorporated. <laughs> Yeah, but both of those ideas were, I mean, especially with Dick stepping into the mantle, that was that was that was temporary. It was always the understanding that Bruce would be back. And when it comes to something like Batman Inc., that was Grant Morrison being Grant Morrison. I know that's why I <laughs> chuckled. I I like don't get me wrong. I like Grant Morrison as as a writer, but he Sometimes. has a bad habit Sometimes. of getting of getting lost in his own head. Sometimes. Yeah. And yeah. So with with everything covered here, I think um, you can't just pass the idea of Spider-Man on to someone else so easily. Yeah. Um, like you pointed out, Ben Riley, Scarlet Spider, he's, he doesn't take the name Spider-Man. Um, and maybe there is a good maybe maybe because of the red and black you could have called uh you could have called miles morales the neon spider since neon is a bright red i do i do remember a friend of mine doing a bit of fan art that ha that had a more had a, had a more tech had a more tech wear like look for for um miles that at, mm. at the very least would would um be a bit more consistent with that Neon Spider, and I, I will admit part of the reason I found that interesting is I've been going down, I've been going down a bit of a rabbit hole when it comes to the tech, when it comes to the tech war slash, slash um steampunk fashion subculture, in um in parts of Japan. Yeah. Um, you know the the same the same the same the same parts where you might where you might still find greasers if you know where to look. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But one of the, one of the other things that we one of the other things that we brought up because some people have have used this as to try to try and make a gotcha, even though it ends up proving my point, is Terry McGinnis. 
And I'm, I'm only bringing that up again to, just to get um, just to get Geek a, a bit caught up. Mm. Except the thing the thing with someone like McGinnis is he's not in the same ver he's not in the same um, Gotham as Batman. No, he's, he's not. not <laughs> he does. If he ha if he ends up using Rogues, um, Batman's Rogues Gallery, it's it's for the conclusion of some sort of story. You could say the same thing about um, Miguel Miguel O'Hara, Spider Man twenty nine. So mm -hmm. that's the same thing. Well, that's actually a more more relevant because it is a Spider Man. Yeah, you know, and with and with t with Terry, his his he d he does have his own Rogues Gallery. I'd, yes. Um, of course, the the big one, of course, being Blight. But and there's Ink, and there's uh, there's the, the the Blue Assassin chick. There's um, there's Shriek. There, you know, he has, yeah, he has his own villains. Yeah. The clo the closest one that you could say is a is a holdover is Spellbinder, and Spellbinder was Spellbinder for decades has been one of those characters that's getting that's gotten tossed around. <laughs> but. If I were to play word association with most people, they'd think of him in Beyond. I'd say, in, yeah. I'd say in part because of how distinctive his look is in that, and his whole and his whole gimmick of 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 util, utilizing illusions. One could one could argue be, one could argue being that being their take on Mysterio, but not quite. Because. <laughs> <laughs> Mysterio, cert Mysterio certainly is, certainly is no stranger to being in, to being an illusionist, but he's far more outlandish in his in his approach, whereas Spellbinder was was not. Um. Right. But with but with with Miles, the the um, the only um the only even when it comes to when it comes to villains, it's lar it's largely the it's largely the same rogues gallery because of him being a sp him being the Spider Man from the Ultimate Universe. Mm -hmm. With when it comes to when it comes to power set, um, it's still it's still lar it's still largely rooted in in Spider Man's in um, Peter Parker's setup, without doing a whole lot different. I mean, yes, there, yes, there's the whole thing with Venom Blast, but that's he's not. But he's not even the first to do that. He Spider Woman has him beat by a few decades on that front too. Mm -hmm. um, so it's only the the invisibility then, maybe. Even even that. Well, I would bring up Invisible Woman, but her but in her but her invisibility is more a, is more a reflection of her ability to bend light. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think. But I I think now that we've covered the ba now that we've covered the basics, I think this is as good a time as any to go into the of uh, the other half of of what I had of what I had planned for that for this, and that is how to how we would potentially rebuild that sort that sort this sort of Miles Morales. Okay, um, I have some ideas of how I would, um. Well, let's t let let's let's um let's say he is he does exist in the same six one six one six universe as Peter Parker. Let's say he never yeah here here's he the, here's the, the ground here here's the ground rules I want I want to set. Um, this one is not this was this is not from some alternate universe. Um, I do, this is this this particular take is a is a full on relaunch. In in this hypothetical, him still being in Earth six, him being him being established in Earth six one six. These the that is that is one of the that is one of the key the key rules. So everything that happens doesn't happen in some alternate universe. It happens in the same universe. Okay. Um, okay. So um, should I start or? Yeah. Go. Go ahead. Go ahead with what. Go ahead with what you got. I'll f I'll fill in the blanks as we as we go in. Well, okay. So one thing I would do is um, one of my favorite eras of Spider-Man was the J. Michael before one more day, and that was during the time when Peter Parker was a high school science teacher, right? 
Now, that is the perfect spot to put Miles Morales in there. Miles Morales is one of Peter Parker, one of Peter Parker's students. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, I would also do a couple of other things. Like, I would have, you know, Mary Jane get pregnant. Um, and then that would be the future May Parker. That would become Spider-Girl in the future. Mayday. Um, Mayday Parker, yes. Um, so, during that run, I would have her announced to Peter I'm pregnant and, you know, all that. But... So I would have Miles be um, be his student, his high, you know, high school student. Mm-hmm. I haven't really figured out how he gets bitten by a spider or anything. Um, and, according to according to the notes that I had, it was it was a spider that was modified with it with a Oz formula. Um, okay. And if if I'm be, if I'm being a if I'm being if I'm being honest in that in that situation, would you still have it that he's on fr- on? F- I'd say on, I'd say on friendly. It would be hard to say friendly relationships with say Oz with say Oscorp because, well, it's Oscorp. <laughs> but mm, what if we make it like an early version of Alchemax? An early version of Alchemax that I think would be I think would be a little bit more believable because. The whole the whole modified version using the Oz formula, mm-hmm. um, it there's way there's way too many questions that would get brought up if you try to use that approach, because because well you've got decades of bad blood with uh, with Oscorp. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gotta, yeah. Gotta go, everybody. Good night. Right. Stay for Good stay night. for us, DJT. Peace. Later. Mm-hmm. But especially since um, even though even though Alchemax is is the bit is the big deal in the 2099 universe, mm-hmm. outside of outside of that, I think there's been a couple mentions of them, but nothing really nothing really concrete. Yeah, no, that's that's more your comparison to Batman Beyond would be Spider Man 2099. Mm-hmm. Different or person, you... di- different char- different person using the same name, different costume. Different era, different villains, different storylines. Mm-hmm. You, you, you could even go with Roxxon, maybe. That's another option. <laughs> Roxxon would be good, because they've been using them in a lot of more modern mm-hmm. style stories in uh, other books. Mm-hmm. And I think they, they are going that way with the video game. In the, in the sec- Yeah, the Miles Morales video game. That- mm-hmm. Yeah. So Roxxon could work, Alchemax could work, you know. Um... I'm, lean- I'm leaning more towards Roxxon, especially since they ha- Roxxon has ma- has made a- has made appearances in the in six one six for a while because they first get they first their first appearance was way back in the mid seventies. Okay, that makes a little more sense then. <laughs> yeah. So the 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 ultimate coin of that is if you're looking at a way to get Miles into the stories, why not look at maybe moving Peter out west? Because both stories are taking place in New York, or the New York area. Why not have Miles stay there because of the culture in that area? And you could revisit Mary Jane going back to Hollywood, which he, which he has done in a solo book uh, last year. The problem with that is that Peter very heavily associated with Another city. Mm, true. Also, Miles is a, you know he he's into hip hop and he makes mix. Uh, maybe Hollywood or, or California is a little better for that. I don't know. Um, if I'm be if I'm being if I'm being honest, um, the the mythos of a character like Spider Man is far far too entrenched in in New York. In, in New York. Yeah. Moving moving him move. Moving him over to moving him over to a more spread out place like, and any part of the Bay Area, honestly, wouldn't wouldn't quite work. Um, you could do that with Miles easily, and I think. I, here here's my here's my counter proposal. Um, okay. I am I am kind of going with the idea that, um, that, 
Roxon was Roxon was trying to was trying to replicate the the same the same spider the same um sp the same spider um pa the same spider modifications that we <laughs> end up seeing with the Oz formula in canon. Um, Parker had gotten a hold of it. It had. He was he was looking into it on his own. The spider managed to get out, managed to get out and but and bite um, Miles. Hmm. Um, the the appro the approach that the approach that I'm go that the approach that I'm going with is that it it doesn't take long for Peter to, fi to for Peter to figure it to figure out what's happening to Miles. Especially when he, you could, you could easily have it written off that he, um, he ends up, t he ends up taking, a, he ends up taking, taking, um, sick leave for like a week. Okay. You know, be, you know, because of, because of what's, ha because of what's happening to him, he, he just, pro he probably thinks it's, he probably thinks it's just a fever until, well, these par the powers start manifesting. Okay. Yeah. yeah but. In the, but in that in that same, but within that, and keep keep in mind with something like this, we're a we're a while before he even dons any sort of any sort of costume. But when but Parker and but Parker ends up, um, taking notice and in, and deciding to, deciding to deciding to send him deciding to have him meet up with a with a friend of it with a couple friends of his in the New York area. Um. Okay. Because the way the way that I the way that I see it, one of the one of the key things that I'd want that I'd want to do with this hypothetical, get him out of Manhattan. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. se there's several boroughs that there's several boroughs that you can utilize within New within New York City. Harlem, I mean Harlem. Harlem in, in the game it was Har in the Miles Morales game it was Harlem. And personally, I'm I'm le I'm leaning towards Har I'm leaning towards Harlem anyways because that because there's one. There's there's a couple people that you can easily have him work with at, in a ment in a mentor role. That being the, that being the heroes for hire. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have Peter be a mentor or a teacher of his. Um. No, not as not as direct not as directly, because mm -hmm. obviously he has his own responsibilities, but. When it but when it comes to taking a more active role with with having him learn the 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 nature of the nature of being a, of being a hero, um, I'd have I'd have I'd have him work with the heroes for hire on that. Or like Luke Cage, what not? Luke, yeah, Luke Cage and Iron Fist. Okay. Especially, especially okay. since some. Um, I've always, because of the clashing personalities, I've always looked at Luke Cage and Iron Fist as, in as an idea, as an ideal, almost ab a, an ideal duo you can do kind of Abbott and Costello like things with, just because mm -hmm. just because of how how much their personalities clash, mm -hmm. and you can of course have some extra fun by having Miles in um right in the right in the middle between that kind of thing. Okay. Um. I had I had also considered having him having him in Hell's Kitchen and, lear and learning under Daredevil, but I didn't qu I didn't quite like how that how that was going. I, so I so I scrapped that. Plus, that would get you in, into trouble with the social media people. I'm already in, I'm already in trouble with the social media people. <laughs> the company I keep, so fuck them. <laughs> uh, it's I don't because know. he's I, black. I, 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 I still, I still like the idea of him moving him to a completely different city. I don't. Yeah. And I, I, and my, and and it, it was completely lost in the in the flood. Mm. Yay! <laughs> mm -hmm. But I don't know if Monk heard it or not. Maybe, maybe, it. maybe uh, see, I, I personally look at maybe looking at Miles and maybe moving him down to Florida. Lord. I know, I, I know, probably not as many, not as many <laughs> villains down there unless they're retired, but. You know. No, he's got he's got a bunch of Florida men to apprehend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> as funny as that would be, absolutely not. I can hear Shade screaming in the si in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, um, you should oh you should have heard him when I to when I told him that a Florida man comic is being made. <laughs> oh, I have that comic. I'm in Florida, there, so I have that comic. There's all there's already a Florida woman comic being made by Meriwether. 
But the reason why I'm insistent on keeping him in the New York area, but not necessarily Manhattan, is the is again the again even even something adjacent to Spider-Man is too too tied to too tied to the culture of New York City. Um, if I if I absolutely cannot use New York, use New Jersey instead. You know, some some place some place along that's so, that's somewhere that's somewhere relatively close to the, to that region. Too easy. Whether whether it be whether it be Jersey, whether oh, you Jersey would work. I mean, mm -hmm. it could. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it would it it wouldn't it wouldn't it wouldn't take too. I, I do I do still like the idea of his of his father being a uh, his father being law enforcement and it it wouldn't it wouldn't ta it wouldn't take too much work for him for him to get him to get transferred to a different to a different city. What about Chicago? I don't know. Chicago has a lot. Mm. Chicago might Chicago might be a might be a stretch. Philadelphia? I don't know. This is this is just me saying that we should send him to Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> I am not breaking out the Kentucky Fried movie yeah. gimmick. Uh, well, I mean, let, let, no, no. Let, let's let's send a, a what what is he? Fifteen, sixteen year old child to do what Robocop couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, we'd get accused of racism again because Detroit. Um, I'm not, not racist. I hate care. everyone equally. Mm -hmm. But again, the again the big reason that I, the big reason I'm leaning towards Harlem is be, is because of the is because of the Heroes for Hire. As as his as a more as a more day to day mentor, he's basic. The basic way I can the basic way I can say it is that he's apprenticing under under them. It's a I, I can I can understand like I can understand what you're getting at there, but seriously, like. When you really think about it, there is way too much set in New York. That's the problem. And, 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 and a lot, a lot of it, yeah, and you, a lot of that, you, well, a lot of that yeah. comes from Marvel originally being in New York. So, you know, you still have a huge country to play with. You don't even have to have Miles in America. You could look at him being, you know. Change him around a little bit and have him be the Spider Man of Cuba. <laughs> I'm pretty yeah, sure yeah. I'm pretty sure if he's the Spider Man of Cuba, uh Castro has him under lock and key <laughs> and he's a and he's a weapon of the state. And you and you I, can tell a completely different set of stories. You know, I, I will story, always though. I will always I will always say one of the best Superman Elseworld stories was Red Sun. Yes. Where, but, Sp where Spider Man is a, a part of the communist Russia. You mean Superman is part of communist Russia? Uh, yeah. The key, the key well, word with ba Batman is, bomb, but you know. The key word with that is Elseworlds. We yeah. Don't we don't have that luxury in this in this hypothetical. Yes. And well, but but who says that we don't we don't have the ability to take the character and transplace him into another place on the country or the world? Why do we have to lock him into New York? Here's, Just because everybody the, else is there, so what? Yeah, I, I don't. I, 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 there's too much in here. There's uh, Avengers, there's Fantastic Four, there's the. Here is here is the other here's here, here is the other reason why I was why I was leaning towards Harlem. It's an opportunity to focus more on the to have him focus more on the street level, um, moti motifs that motifs that have been present. Mm. There's also I, I, again you're also now starting to fall into stereotypes of you know people of specific skin colors being locked into certain styles of crime and well, the, certain the reason, areas. The the idea with with the idea with do, with doing the street level it was all, that I had that I had in mind was gradually moving upwards. How how so like. Um, this I this idea of the whole, the have, having him work with the heroes for hire is this, is essentially a gl is a glorified apprenticeship. Um, and event and eventually, 
once once he's once he's had more once he's had more experience being it being able to being able to work with big being able to work with bigger names or a big a or a, or a bigger or a bigger scale of things oh um, i personally i i lean more toward moving him to another city completely i think that's what i would do if, yeah. like, like like you have you have other groups you have like the new avengers you have the west coast avengers if the, if that's the case the city that i'd pro the city if I think I think the city that w that would have a would have a layout that would fit that certainly way outside of New York would be Chicago. Yeah. Oh. Oh, come on, monk. Send send Miles to Texas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have him take down good old boys. Yeah, that'd be modern progressivism. I mean, that's not exactly what I mean, but okay. Um, <laughs> if I were to, if I were to use if I were to use Texas, I'd probably use Austin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know Why not San Francisco? Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, said... look! If Venom, if Venom can do it in the movies. <laughs> Why do I hear Eminem music all of a sudden? <laughs> Not sure. Because <laughs> you're slowly going crazy. Too late. I already am crazy. Slowly? Going? Don't going you mean gone. instantly there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he needs his own gross gallery, too. Like, oh, de definitely. oh, definitely. And I, th I think I think that um, since, since I think that ha I think that that said, ro that said, rogues gallery can, with, at least with a few, can be t can be tied to, um, can be tied Your to rocks on in industries. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or, sorry, ro rocks on energy corporation. Mm -hmm. and See what one, one thing I, I I would interject like, okay, you want to have him have his own rogues gallery. You might want you want to try and keep him in the New York area because of the legacy and everything that's there. Why not look look at doing a time shift? Say you know uh, there was a, a spectacular series that was done using Spider Man. That was Spider Man. Uh, I think it was called My Life or Lifetime or something. Yeah, where they, where, 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 they, where, they, where they had Spider Man age in real time from his initial induction in the 1950s if 60s. you go in the 60s it? yeah it, but uh what i'm getting at is maybe you, you and this would end up being one of those ones where you ha actually have to age parker out of the the universe but have him end up going that mentor route or even that legacy route where Miles becomes a new Spider-Man in a time between Amazing Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2099. That's actually a pretty interesting idea. I I, 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 I kind of like that one too. That could be another way to go that I would be kind of like into. Yeah, I like that one also. Mm -hmm. Oh. That's... As I can, I can definitely, I can definitely, I can definitely see that because with the, with this with this particular with this particular approach, I think I think if we I think if we ease if we ease people into 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 the idea of passing the torch, um, you're not going to have as you're not going to have as much of an issue. Although, to to be fair, if if we're passing the torch. I would rather it be Mayday than Miles, personally. Yeah. Yeah, but we can't. We, we can't have Mayday because of that storyline. Well, 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 as long as we're changing things, why don't we change that too? Why don't we? We've ar we've already messed with the timeline, so I don't I don't see a reason why we have to why we have to keep that in. Yeah. Um, especially especially since I especially since we've built this with the assumption of a reboot anyways mm -hmm. so excise, so excising that from from Canon I am perfectly fine with doing 
Yeah, I, it should have been done a long time ago. And, and now, I don't know if you know, but they're they're thinking about splitting them up again. So yeah, the the reboot is coming in April. Yeah, that's the wor- That is that is the worst April Fool's joke I've I've heard in years, and I know a thing or two about April Fool's jokes. Yeah, could, well, it's also because it's the 60th anniversary of the Amazing Spider-Man as well, so, you know, Marvel likes to, let's celebrate our history by shitting all over it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'd say, that, I'd, say they have that, I'd say they have that in common with Transformers. <laughs> so, I, 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 think, I think having the same timeline, just a little younger, like, you know, um, I, I like the idea of him being Peter's student at first right mm-hmm. and then through the through events he gets bitten by a spider or through rock sun or something or whatever and then at some point he has to move to another city mm-hmm. um and that way he could branch out on his own and he has his own villains and you know yeah i would i would say that the a bit of the reasoning for for him to for him to move out of for him to move out of New York is the is the idea that he that while he's in New York he'd be too tempting of a target. Mm-hmm. And you could you could easily have a scene where P, where Peter ta- where Peter talks with Miles's father about about what's going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because. Um. With with someone like with someone like Miles, you have the potential in the in the same way that you had a degree of this potential with um, t- with Tim Drake in the sense that you have you have a young hero who who has a positive relationship with with his or, with his or her parents. Because um, before before identity crisis happened, which is another case of I don't want to talk about it. Um, Tim Drake ha- Tim Dr- Tim Drake's father was ver- was very supportive of his son. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um what? And I'm th- and I can ki- I can kind of I can kind of see the I can kind of see something not too far off when it co- when it comes to Miles. Um Yeah. But and it, I will I will admit that that the I'm a I'm a big I'm a big fan of the of the men, of the mentor and student type of type of sto- type of story. So I will I will admit that that kind of that kind of trickled in. I do th- I do think that within within Chicago there are there are certain um that it, that is the good spot to do a rogues gallery as tempting as it as tempting as it would be to have him have some sort of feud with with um Roxon. I wouldn't want to do that too much. I wouldn't want to dip de- de- too much into that because that would that could feel like a case of been there done that. We, we knew, meaning with Oscorp kind of thing or Yeah. Okay. As tempting as it is to ha- to have to have Roxon act as his version of Oscorp. We've ar- we've seen we've seen that kind of story before many times. It's in the video game. Mhm. Yeah. Yeah. It, plus, plus, you also have the currently have the Beyond Corporation to work against as well, which yeah. has been going on in, in the comics recently. The the company who bought out Parker Industries now owns the rights to the name Spider Man, hence why Ben Riley is back in the picture, and they actually actively served Miles with a cease and desist in using the name Spider Man. So that set up another corporation. Currently, that he's fighting against. Yeah. Um. I do. As I rec. The but um having having that kind of set up the other thing the other thing that I'd like to de- I'd like to delve into a bit is. Both is both his costume and his and his kit. Um. I do th- I do think because of, because of the con- because of the connections he has with. Parker being his teacher, that getting getting some, some some more some adva- some advanced tech, especially especially given the whole time jump that we've been talking about, is is certainly something to consider. Mm-hmm. 
but have but having him having him in a black and red variant of of the of the classic look doesn't sit with me. Okay. I will admit I I will admit I do I will admit I do I think I think that the the more the more graffiti the more graffiti style look of the of movie Miles, of Miles in into the Spider Verse is a step in the right direction. Well, there's I mean in um in the Miles Morales game he has a lot of um costumes. Some of them are pretty neat mm -hmm. um, and pretty unique. Yeah. Um, any of those could work. Mm -hmm. But yeah. just just something that it just something that isn't the the um cl the classic the classic design just with different colors. Yeah. Well, he has recently gone through a, a new design in the comics as well, but it is still a black and red costume. They've changed it to more so, sort of a a hoodie and tights type deal rather than. The one that yeah, he has been wearing. It, it, it's funny. It's, it's the hoodie. <laughs> the hoodie look is a little... the nose. I don't know. But still, it gives him a way to be diff differentiated. It does, yeah. Mm -hmm. Even though he has his own set of clones now, but that's another story. Yeah. Really? No, of course. Um. <laughs> I do remember. I do remember pitching the idea of the the name Wolf Spider to to you. Um, that yeah, I mean, that could be cool. But then you would have to have a wolf a wolf motif. I don't know. Um, wolf Spider motif. I don't know. Um, no, you you kill, still keep the the spider motif, mm -hmm. but it gives you a chance to. To make a variation on the suits. Yeah, and I br I brought up Wolf Spider because that is a that is a that is a that is a um different variant of of um sp of sp of spider. Um. <laughs> yeah. I'd. S but what um. I'm just, I'm just waiting for Australia to get their own version. We'll call it Huntsman. <laughs> um, but one of one of the one of the I'm, reasons... not, I'm not I'm not I'm not crazy about it, but yeah. But one one of the reasons that I that I went with that I went with that is you is if he if he was bitten if he was bitten by a wolf spider that had that you can go you can go with something slightly different when it comes to his default kit. That being him, that being him, him having significantly more power in his legs. So jumping a bit more, jumping ability more. Mm -hmm. okay. So, so if Bat Rock the Leaper got to be by a spider. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> the approach the approach with this with this particular take because I did. I end up doing a bit of a di I end up doing a bit of a dive looking looking into looking into it. Um, and granted, wolf spiders don't don't spin webs, but we but that's something that we can we can create we can creatively interpret. <laughs> but they but they are no but they are known for ha for have for having very good eye for having very good eyesight and very good um, jumping abilities. <laughs> Okay, so that you, you power set. Yeah. the uh, the idea that the idea that I'm going with with this is that the he doesn't ha he doesn't have organic webs. He 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 has he has the he has the classic mechanical ones. Mm -hmm. Um. But he but he has but he has very he has very good eyesight. To the to the point that he has to the point that you could prob you could probably go full Riddick with him and have him that and have it that he can, that um he can see in the dark. Okay, um, yes. yeah, that's actually kind of cool. I I do I do like that 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 power that being one of his powers. Yeah. He can see in the dark. Yeah. 
Um, as far as far as the invisibility, I'm per I'm perfectly fine with keeping that, but I'd ra I'd rather I'd rather um tweak it slightly so it's n so it so it's not is not exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Um, the the approach the approach that I'm considering is more is more in the. It, there's two. There's two ways I'm, I'm thinking of. One is more in the realm of camouflage. The uh, the other is being is being able to control his heat, being able to control his heat signature. If you if you look at if you look at certain games like say Metal Gear Solid when they whenever they've introduced um, optic camouflage, the big flaw with it is that is that people who is that you're still you can still be detected by heat signature. So I'm going with I'm going with the idea that that it's that it's very it's it's very difficult to even when he's in total darkness it's very difficult to detect him by sound or or by or by heat. Hmm. Well, okay. So aside from the fact that I'm not crazy about the wolf spider name, what if who was who, 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 whoever's making this experiment is trying to improve upon the original formula? And they mix in DNA of different spider species than the first experiment did. Wolf spider being one of them, and maybe some others. That I, I that I would certainly be willing to go with. Yeah. Because if the whole the whole idea with the Oz with a spider modified with the Oz formula was to try and re was to try and replicate that same set of powers. Mm -hmm. If if they could get so. F and usually, with that kind of thing, replication is on, is the first phase. Future phases are are about, quote unquote, improving it. <laughs> but I, but I, I ended up looking into different types of spiders and how and and how they and how they work. And the i the idea the idea that I I settled on I settled on wolf spider. Wolf spider, I I will admit a bit much, but that was that was because of the leaping abilities that th that those spiders have, as well as as well as the whole thing with eyesight. <laughs> um. But I th I think I think having it I think having a cocktail of it is cer is cert is certainly a po is certainly a possibility. Um. It would it would also go it would also go a bit of ways to explaining why he had why he thought he had a fever for a week when he got after he got bit. Yeah. Oh. I mean, we we don't we don't necessarily have to give him his own. Like, I mean, we we could give we could we could uh, we could give Miles some of Peter's more obscure villains if he wanted to. Also, mm -hmm. you know. Spider-Man's had so many villains that there's a, some really, really like obscure. Give to. Well, while this one, while one that I was considering has been in the has been in the comics off and on. Um, Boomerang. Huh. Boomerang. I think one of them. I was I was actually leaning towards Screwball. Yeah, Screwball's in the video games. Yeah, yeah. Um. Uh. Large, largely because with Screwball, that that's 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 a vi that's a villain that you can u that you can utilize to to do a few to do a few shots at influencer culture. And it would work better with a younger hero like a young like Miles Morales mm -hmm. too, you know. Um, but yeah, I could see Screwball being a Miles Morales yeah. for sure. Um, as to maybe as temp. I um I will I will admit I was br I was bringing this up just to be a smartass, but um I'd also I'd also considered Tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool too. I mean Tombstone. I will I will admit I will admit that um Tombstone is, Tombstone is usually is usually just a just a just a jumped just a jumped up thug. Um, with spe with spectacular being the exception, where he was the kingpin in all but name, because for whatever reason they couldn't get Wilson Fisk. And uh, spectacular, spectacular Spider Man was. Yeah. Oh. I'm sure. Um. What about Shrike? I haven't heard hide nor hair about Shrike in years. 
Shrike. Oh, oh, hold on, let me see something. Um, right Killer Shrike. I remember, I remember seeing him off and on back back in the day, but I haven't seen much of him in a while. So that's one that's one that you can certainly use, or at the, or even a even somebody who's a successor who took who took um, Shrike's old gear. Let's see. I put I. I put on I put on Google obscure Spider-Man villains just to see what we have to work with. <laughs> There's Stegron the Dinosaur Man. No, that's a little bit that's a little bit too much of a reach. Uh, Grizzly. <laughs> a bit There's a character called Grizzly. I think Grizzly's currently the babysitter of Spider-Man. This kid isn't. Oh, okay. I think. I'm not sure. I don't read modern comics, so I don't really know. Um, Calypso? Calypso? Is it Calypso? <laughs> oh. Slide. Okay, here's Slide. Here's Slide. Yeah. Um, the Human Fly. Crime Master. <laughs> no. That name is way too on the nose. Stilt Man. <laughs> Still, man, I would love. It. Still, man, pops up in Iron Man. Okay, the spot. That's the guy that has the those. Um... Yeah, yeah, hasn't hasn't appeared in. I think the last time I saw him was somewhere in around about volume four of the books. Did a one off. I think he's trapped in his own dimension or something at the, at the moment. Yeah, my as far as far as a primary one, I'm I'm still I'm primarily leaning towards um, Shrike because I get the because the la because the last thing the last thing that he was involved with was the Masters of Evil. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, slide slide might be cool. Plus, having having a vi having a villain who primarily works in ra in range would be would be an interesting obstacle for for someone whose kit is largely going to revolve around um cl around close range. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mirage. Hmm. Mirage is a lot like uh, Mirror Master, apparently. All the record device to confuse opponents. I put, I put in I put in Mirage in the database and I I I get I get four I get four answers. Um, for Sp for Spider Man villains really. Now just just for characters with that just for characters with that name. Um, one of them be, the prime one being Telepath. Um, I. And one one of the one of the others being 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 Danielle Moonstar, who who I don't think we'd be using for this. Obviously, we would have to uh, use Prowler because he's been closely tied to Miles Morales now. Mm -hmm. Well, it's his uncle, so yeah. Yeah. Um. But. But yeah. Um. And I, I will, I will admit that when, when it comes, when when it comes to some, when it comes to some variant of a, of a Young Avengers or or the equivalent, you can you can easily bring him in into that and and bring him out when when not when necessary. Mm -hmm. um, which, which which they already did. Mm -hmm. Champions, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it. When it comes when it comes to when it comes to other other heroes to interact with, I, I will I will admit that it would be it would be amu it would be amusing for him to have have this idea of the of these of these ups of these very these very upstanding mentor like heroes, and then he ends up meeting Moon Knight, <laughs> and having to deal with Moon Knight um being Moon Knight. Yeah, I don't know much about Moon Knight, so. Um, um with Mo there's the two th the two things with Moon 
with Moon Knight is one being the avatar of Khonshu, a a, a a Egyptian a Egyptian god who has meant who has many aspects. One of one of them, of course, being the moon, but mm -hmm. also also the traveler and the protector. When you're dealing with Egyptian mythos, things get weird. <laughs> um, the other the other aspect, and this is something that's been to that's been toyed with off and on, is the f is the fact that Moon Knight has it ha arguably has some form of disassociative identity disorder. Thanks to schizo. <laughs> more more or less, I do I do think. I think one of I think one of the one good one good um take in fact one of my favorite takes when it comes to Moon Knight is the run that Warren Ellis had with him. Mm -hmm. Putting aside the fact that it's Warren Ellis and he and he is absolutely he is brilliant when it comes to his work. But he just but he decided to he, just, he decided to take a take a different approach and focus more on his relationship with Konshu. Essentially, being being burdened as the avatar of a god that he doesn't understand. Uh, the, but I will ad I will admit that 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 is a that is me extremely summar summarizing the matter. But well, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Let's show because no. <laughs> Oh, uh, but th but throughout that, I think I think a I think a decent rogues gallery can be can reasonably be established with with but with with Roxxon, I'd ha I'd probably have it that they're not, that they're not directly involved with every bit of villainy. I don't want the um. I don't I don't want I don't want the Moriarty problem to happen. <laughs> but the, but there but it's always something to keep in the ba to keep in the background if they're if they're involved or not. Um, yeah. Whether 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 you use that as a red whether that's used as a red herring or or a legit or a legit um, involvement, that's something that can vary from story to story. <laughs> um, in this hypothetical, would you eventually have? Would, do you think do you think it would be a good or bad idea for him to eventually get in, um, get in co get in contact with the likes of Shield? Because I think it'd be only a matter of time before Shield, um, pays attention. Um, I I don't I don't see why not. I mean that 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 could. Um, that could work. Mm -hmm. I do. I do think... now. Go, go ahead. Go on. If I had my choice of getting rid of Miles or or having Mayday, I would pick Mayday over Miles because that to me makes the most sense. The approach I'm kind of going with this is that Ma is that that with this as we've built it so far is that Miles is uh, is often is often Chicago most most of the time, whereas okay. Um, Mayday would have Mayday would eventually take on, take on the mantle of Spider Girl in New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So in that regard, you can you can have both. They're just they're just doing they're just doing they're just doing their own things in separate areas. And is there the possibility that you can have Mi that you can have Miles come back to New York eventually? Yes. Mm -hmm. But I think I think by that point he would. By the time he by the time he would it would be akin to the prodigal son returning. I.e. he's I.e. he's not the he's not exactly the same person as he was when he started out. I do I like the idea of Peter mentoring him even even when he moves away like video. Mm -hmm. What I like that and 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 one of the elements in the video game. Was the relationship the relationship that Peter had with Miles? I liked it. It was really well done. Um, and it's something that I would want to keep, even if he moves to another city. Yeah. You know. He pr he probably um, Miles in this Miles in, even if he's even if he's in Chicago, he probably has he probably has Peter's number on speed dial. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we could, you know, come up with any number of reasons why, why, um, why he moves to, to Chicago or any other city, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, his father could get, you know, like he, you know, another offer from another, another police department where he's going to get paid more money, you know, mm-hmm. or, um, I think that would work best probably, right? Or, or you could do something that most of the Marvel comic books have tried and keep reverting all the time. Let's age him up a little. Let's have him go to, go to university or something in Chicago. Yeah, that could work too. Yeah. Give, give him a, give him a whole, the other, and this is, this is one thing that sort of irked me just quietly while I've been listening is that we haven't quite addressed the, the deep part of the, problem why using Miles as a replacement ca- character did not work. Uh, but the thing is, a lot of people from my parents' generation and myself, we've grown up with some form of Peter Parker. We've seen him go through college, we've seen him go into adulthood, we've seen him go backwards, we've seen him go forwards again, we've seen highs, lows, and successes. Mm-hmm. The Miles Morales character has been around now for 11 years. It's one of those characters that a lot of people in my brother's generation, so like, you know, the the Gen Z generation, as they like to call them, have grown up with that character as an example of who Spider-Man is. And one of the things that creates the character is seeing that character go through the same problems as the readers. A lot of the, the people that grew up when that were starting to get into comics or got into comics with Miles Morales, then now got be gotten to the end of high school, they start to go off into college and stuff like that. So why can't we look at the idea of aging the character up a little bit and have him be that modern day representation of that generation? Well, that, I mean, that, that spells a much bigger problem that Marvel has, is that they, they just don't want to do that. They always have to reboot the character to take him back to an early point. I, I, look, at, I look at that as, as a consequence of over-relying on a status quo for the wrong reasons. Mm-hmm. The, but if, if, I'm being, if I'm being honest... With the with the push more and more in in various media to serialized stories, not whether whether that whether that be through whether that be through manga whether that be through te- whether that be through television, whether that be whether that be even through film. You're not while you are see, while you're seeing some form of of episodic storytelling. You in the last decade we've seen more and more se- more and more serialization. You know how how many how many long how many long form shows on on premium cable have have made the have made the rounds in one form or another, whether that be The Walking Dead, whether that be Game of Thrones before that happened, um, or th- or things like or even even a few year, even years back with things like with things like Stargate. Yeah. Because well, Star well Stargate originally was on Showtime. And of course, I'd of course I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up stuff like Breaking Bad or The Sopranos. Mm-hmm. And I've they, seen most of those shows you mentioned, so yeah. The point the point the point that I'm making when it comes when it comes to bringing up all those shows is that is this is this uh, is the fact that it's f- it's far more in vogue to have that level of serialization. And the the idea of the idea of growing up with characters that we that we see over the span of years, yet a lot yet a lot of people in Marvel seem to have this idea of we need to, of we need to keep things at a at a certain status quo and not change. They're deathly afraid. Yeah, they're deathly afraid of growing, having to. Oh, grow. believe me, I I understand that. I'd say, like, I'd say one, I'd one, one, one of one of my favorite parts of Spider Man over the last, um, not even five years. Was the what I something I initially thought I was going to hate, which was when um, Doc Ock took over Peter's mind. Mm-hmm. 
in the, in that time in that uh, Superior Spider Man run, uh, using Doc Ock as like the the brain power behind Peter Parker, we saw more development in that Peter Parker character in that short run than we had seen in Peter Parker in the last ten years. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then and then as soon as the character started getting to the point where you know the the progression was actually starting to pay off and you you might have a happy Peter Parker. Oh, look at that. We pulled the plug and we got to reboot him back to being Peter Parker and make him go back to the bugle or you know, his life gets shit on or something like that. Mm-hmm. Because that's the status quo for Peter Parker. You know, Peter, Peter Parker is never allowed to be happy. Uh, Batman's never going to be able to get over the death, death of his parents. Superman's always going to be the all-American hero. You know, Cap- Captain America's going to be stuck in the 1960s, even though he's now been alive probably longer now than he was back in, in that era. You know, even Bruce Banner, you know, that they've actually made progress with him and then they revert it back again. It's it, like progressing a character in Marvel, just like you said, it seems to be that one thing that they don't want to do. I don't know whether it's. The argument uh, that I've heard... A managerial mandate, or whether the writers just can't see beyond themselves. I'd say it's a little of column A and a little of column B. The argument that I've heard, the argument that I've heard for the longest time whenever there's these reboots, and it's an argument that I find questionable, is wanting to not alienate new readers. The idea, the, well, this idea that this idea that too much continuity will will make will make it will make it too daunting for newcomers to to come in. What a, what a, okay, well, it's funny you mentioned Superman. I, one of my favorite things was, was Rebirth, um, which is when, when he had a son with Lois and he had, and he was a father. Um, I, I love that run. I mean, I, I absolutely loved seeing Superman be a dad. That was just beautiful. And I read most of that run. I read, Super Sons. I read Action Comics, and I read um, and I read the Superman stuff. Um, and mm. then I heard they were going to bring in Bendis, and I read one issue of that, and I, I'm done. That's it. That I wasn't, you know. Um, so they have something good, something that's working, something that people like, um, and they just obliterate it. And I don't understand. I don't understand why. Oh, I'd say I'd say the other thing is this idea that you need to, this idea that the big two have that you need to cycle people out, in and out of um of cer- of certain of certain care of certain characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, of right of writing certain characters, which the problem is when you when you do that, if you're get um. You're gonna have you're gonna have right you're you're gonna have writers who have who have a completely different idea that it, that may not may not gel with what people have gravitated to up up until that point. Um, I think what one of the big ones that comes to mind for me was Dan Abnett's run with Aquaman. I will I will admit a bit of bias because I mostly know Dan Abnett through his runs with um, Warhammer Forty Thousand where he's Really, really, really good, and his, and his run with Aquaman was also really, really good. Then, all, then all of a sudden, he he gets he gets moved out, and the writer that and the writer that succeeded him was not was not good. And the other the other thing the other thing about that is we've ha- is it's a it's a problem that's it's a problem that's unique to the big two. Uh, actually, guys, I do have to go. <laughs> um... Yeah. All right. So but, thanks, uh, thanks for stop. Thanks for stopping by, Geek. No problem. You guys have a good night. All right. Stay for stay for man. All right, man. Bye. Yep. But I think see the- see just, just like Miles Morales himself, we can't keep an audience around. But. I think I think overall with with this kind with this kind of direction you can you can have it you can have you can 
I'm fu I'm fully I'm fully in favor of ha of aging him up and not having him look like he's eternally in high school. Because yeah, especially especially since it, especially since by ha by having him eternally in that young age, it's funny that you bring up the Gen Z, the Gen Z thing. Because if 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 it's if you're trying to keep him young to appeal to a young audience, that young audience is going to still want to read it's going to still want to read the character but you can't keep cycling young audience for young audience because ta because you're not because you're going to end up trend jumping and by mo by move by by go by having him go up with age you can have you can have a character who who is more like is more likely to be considered timeless with time Due to due to the due to the fact that people have that you have that you'd have a whole generation who's grown up with that character, but with the way that with the way that they've handled it, by having him by having him constantly be in high school age, um, you at you can there you end up bottlenecking the kind of stories you can tell. Mm -hmm. And it mean it means that you are it means that you are forced to constantly do that reset. Granted, I think the other reason why 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 the big two is so uh, is so infatuated with resets is because of is because um spe must speculator market. Yeah. Which I on I honestly think should have died back in the nineties, and stayed dead. Well, we, 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 yeah, it should have stayed dead in the nineties because that's when we had the bit. The last gigantic speculator boom, which just absolutely destroyed comics in essentials. Mm -hmm. And the other, but the, but I will, I will, I, I will, ad I will admit that if that if Wolf Spider is not is not a good is not a good enough name, um, I could, we could probably just go with Arachnus. Yeah, uh, look, I don't think that, like, the name, changing the name would do something to you, give Miles a, a unique identity, I agree. As to what it is, then that's not really something I'm going to comment on, because I wouldn't have a great idea anyway. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, not, say, I'm not saying that either, I'm not saying that Wolf Spider or Arachnus is, is any be no. better. No. And you, you go, you go, remember, we, we've had, if you have a look at things like, um, like the Spider Verse series that came out, God, nearly four years ago, they've used so many different variations on Arachna, Arachnid, Spider. You know, there's they've used so many names over the years that maybe we could go with something that's not even Spider related with 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 Miles. You know, it's. If you, when you look at the, the realm of what can we do or what possibilities are there, especially in a comic book space, the, the possibilities are limitless and without restriction. It all comes down to how you market a character and how that character is going to be portrayed to your audience. Mm -hmm. So if you can't write stories involving Miles Morales that aren't appealing to an audience, then why keep the book around in the first place? That's that that was my, my biggest thing about coming on to here to discuss this was the fact that you know while Miles has been a popular character, he's had his moments in time. Overall when you look at it, he's just basically been a retread of Peter. And while that works for some people in a new generation, for long-term readers like myself, I've been collecting comics since the age of six years old. I'm now 38 years old. Sitting behind me, in my ch behind me on a shelf, is 800 single issues of Amazing Spider-Man. I could go through most of that and pull out stories that they've redone for miles. Mm -hmm. So. The idea of Miles was to build new stories, new characters, and that. If you're not going to do it, then, you know, get get rid of him or get rid of Peter. Mm -hmm. P 
pick one and just stick with it. Like the 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 management and the writing people these days need to have the balls to stick with a decision. At the moment in the current comic books, Pe- Peter was on his deathbed, but he's suddenly after a couple of issues he's recovered and he has to retrain his body to be Spider-Man again. This is a perfect opportunity to have pushed Miles into the forward space to take the gap while Peter's recovering. But instead, they brought back Ben Riley for some reason. Uh, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous how a company can miss so many opportunities with a character that, that was so popular that he was able to survive an entire comic imprint being killed off. And he was the only character to survive, yet when you put him in the main universe, you can't think of anything to do with him. So what do you do? You retread old grounds. Like I said uh, earlier, Miles has just recently gone through his own version of the Clone Saga. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they have nothing else to write about him. If you, if you can't find something to write about him that's going to make him unique, retire the character. Don't, don't try to reinvent him. Retire him. And just admit, we don't know what to do with him. And eventually a writer will come along and reinvent the character or do something that's going to bring it, the character forward. Of course. And I, I'm well aware that if, that if they were to retire him, then th- that they would... Um... That there that there would be a bu- that there would be a bunch of people on social medias that would cr- that would cry foul, but um, yeah, but they don't they don't buy the books anyway, so who gives a fuck? Yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the mindset that that's the mindset that I think a lot more companies need to have. You're the peop the people who are, the people who might give you who might give you a few brownie points on 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 Twitter or whatnot. They're not gonna they're not gonna buy your they're not gonna buy your books. At wor- at most, they might buy one issue as some as some sort of solidarity thing. And even th- and even then, that's a minority of a minority. And the fa- the fact that for for as for as popular as the as the character is purported to be, it's not mo- the comic isn't moving the needle is is demonstrating this. With where you because the I know I as far as the, as far as this whole trying trying to ap- trying to appeal to a trying to appeal to a younger audience. The fact of the matter is, is that you is that you cannot um, you cannot try and hyper focus on appealing to one audience over the other because you will end up not appealing to either of them. I you want to know you want to know what would be an excellent case in point when it comes to this sort of thing. Junior Lands NXT 2.0. Yeah. They talk, they but, talk but, they, the, but the but the but the but the difference between Junior, junior Land and NXT 2.0. And a comic book, especially in such a oversaturated demographic as the Spider-Man universe, or just Spider-Man characters in general are, Miles Morales could be the book that you use to be the experiment. Mm-hmm. You, you have that leeway because not so many people are writing stuff with the character. If you want to try mixing something up, that's the book to do with it. You want to make something that's going to appeal specifically to the younger generation? That's the book to do it in. But you can't. But if you're trying to do that, you can't half-ass it. No, you either go all you either go all in or not at all. Mm-hmm. And I'm not. I'm not saying that our that our take of moving him to Chicago, aging up, aging him up, and having him deal deal with villains that may not have that aren't that aren't being used as much, like Shrike. Or, or, or the or the like is the ideal way to, is the ideal way to do it. But, it but the reason wh- the reason why I wanted to go into wanted to go into that construction is to is to demon- is to demonstrate that with the right approach, you can do so- you can do something with that character to make to make it st- to make it stand out to make it it's to make it its mm. own identity because. Which is, which is how the character originally debuted. Mm-hmm. He was his own thing. He was his own standout character in, in a new universe that came out of 
the the fallout event you know but but then they botched it because well my, uh, the rest of the ultimate universe books weren't selling mm-hmm. sorry catch off yeah no no wor- no worries man but i would s- I, and again again there is a there is a nostalgia problem that per- that permeates popular media of people um wa- of people claim of people claiming that claiming that they're that they're sick of nostalgia and yet and yet not um not putting their money where their mouth is when the time comes which is something that i've which is something that i've talked about extensively over the years yeah but with 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 a kit with some with something like with something like Miles, I know a lot of people want to do the whole he he is Spider Man, and no and nobody's saying that he nobody's saying that he isn't. However, what he what he it what he is is someone standing in too large of a shadow, and until he until you have him get out of that shadow, he will always he will always be looked at within the, within that comparative lens. Yeah. Popular characters are popular for a reason. They have connection with the reader or the viewer. And eventually they become associated with the terms. Yeah. When you when anybody says Spider Man, they think straight away Peter Parker, the red and black you know, the mostly red with the black line suits. Mm-hmm. You you say Venom, you think Eddie Brock with the big symbiote. Mm-hmm. You say Superman, that's Clark Kent mm-hmm. with the the red, the red and the the red undies and the blue suit. Mm-hmm. Batman is Bruce Wayne. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you don't you don't think Batman and go instantly Terry McGinnis, but you say Batman Beyond, you go Terry McGinnis. Mm-hmm. Oh, that, that that that's an association over time of a character or a person with a character or a person with a brand. And once that is ingrained in the global lexicon, it is hard to change that in people's mind. Like I always say, your know, brand association is what it is because of the popularity of a product. You know, Band Aid isn't what it is called; it's an adhesive strip. Brand Band Aid is the brand that you associate it with. You say hamburger, people think McDonald's. You say chicken. KFC. Mm-hmm. I'd, I um even even in even in a macro scale on the on that kind of thing, even pe- even people who know even people who know me personally, still and still end up calling me monk. <laughs> yeah. Because 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 I've because of how because of how um strict I've strict I've been with that being, the that being, the identity that I that I present on on this channel. And I, I'm not put, I'm not putting myself in the same on the same on the same level of of Spider-Man or Superman with this kind of thing, but more more to more to illustrate that this is something that can take effect in a macro scale and a micro scale. Hmm. And I think I think that with one one thing that I want I want to bring up as a bit of a coda that I've brought up in the past. Is what I call the ta- a tale of two captains. If you'll forgive me for bringing up um, Star Trek in this regard, <laughs> the way that I, I've always I've, the saying that I've always gone with is this: Janeway was written to be the female captain. Cisco was not written to be the black captain. And I th- I think that's the reason why when. So, right. See again, you again you say Captain and Star Trek. I'm thinking Picard and um, uh, the three the three names that will, that all, that always end up always end up being brought up in conversation when it comes to Captain is um, Kirk and Picard, obviously. Sometimes, yes, yes, Kirk and Picard. Sometimes Cisco, but I think people I think people look at Cisco as a commander, not a captain. Yeah, see, I would have gone three. I would have gone Janeway as the third. <laughs> But but that's all. That's only because of the, those were the shows that I watched. Star Wars. Uh, uh, sorry, not Star Wars. Star Trek wise. Wow, have I got the fanboys coming up me now. I'm gonna hide. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't be the first time you pissed off a bunch of fanboys. I seem to do it every week. 
Oh, uh, don't worry, I've done it at least twice this week. But the re the reason the reason why I bring that kind of thing up is unless is unless uh, um, is that if you're going to be introducing some if you're going to be introducing someone into into that zeitgeist, you cannot do you cannot do the ma the mantle thing unless that was already established. Um, and yeah, it's, like, it's like it's like it's like Jane Jane Foster becoming Thor for a while. Like that came out of nowhere, and they treated a name as a mantle instead of what it was. Except, except for the except for the fact that, like I said, with certain characters, you could you can you can definitely do that, and the idea of legacy heroes has been a thing for decades. But you can't do that with just anyone. There is only one Thor. Oh, there is only one Thor Odin's son. Yes, there's the whole thing of Mjoln of Mjolnir having um giving the worthy the power of Thor. But that does but even but whenever that's been done in the past, um, they didn't they didn't become they didn't become Thor. Um no. Sto I remember I just um when Eric Masterson was ha had had the powers of Thor, it's not like he was Thor Odin's son. Even when even when he became his own thing with um thun with Thunderstrike, mm -hmm. with um, there, I distinctly remember Beta, that there Beta was Ray Bill. Beta, Beta Ray Bill's one of, one other one big example. Um, there was also the brief time that Storm held Mjolnir, which I think mm -hmm. I think is a case of overpowered. <laughs> yeah, you know, and then you got Captain America being able to wield to wield Mjolnir in the the movies. He didn't become Thor all of a sudden, didn't he? No. He just got the ability to con to to throw the hammer and control the the lightning that came from it. Mm -hmm. And with it, and the and when you whenever you try and whenever you try and force the ma the idea of the mantle with within a within a comic book culture that is used to people temporarily taking on an, a name until a name until the proper name comes back for. One reason or another, that's not something you can have people unlearn. It's it's like tr it's like trying to teach teach yourself to catch with your opposite hand. Yes, I know some people listening might be ambidextrous. You don't count for this um, particular thought experiment. Yeah, you're you're mutants. You belong in the X Men universe. Go away. <laughs> but I am I am left-handed. There is no way in hell I am catching anything with my right hand. Yeah. It's also the, I'm I'm right I'm right-handed. I couldn't catch shit with my left. Mm -hmm. And I think, I maybe you can as some as somebody who's who's been a, who's been a former wrestler. Maybe you can, maybe you can tell me if this is the case. Is it tr is it true that you that usually with working a match you you primarily work one side? You work the left. Yeah. The, the story a story that I heard a story that I heard a long time ago is that. One of is that um, you work the, you work the left, but for some reason in lucha they work the right. Uh, I'm not too sure about lucha, but I can say for sort of the American style, uh, the, the the one that's sort of, the, the 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 sports entertainment style, <laughs> um, it is primarily done to the left. I'd say I'd say I'd say that I'd say that predates um, um, sports entertainment going all the way back to these. To oh, it goes back to the Carney days. Yeah, slam bang western style and the and the gold dust trio. Um, but the but get, getting back on getting back on the getting back on the rails. If the I bring I bring that I bring that kind of thing up because the reason. One could one could ease look at consider consider TNG. The first two seasons of TNG are not held in high regard, and in my opinion, the reason why they're not held in high regard is because, well, one Rod, one Roddenberry was a dick. Two, he was trying to do the exact kind of stories that he that he did with TOS without under without understanding that all of the context had changed, and. And what and what people liked about um, Trek 
was not was not what he was trying to do. I'm va I'm vastly simplifying, but what but once he was kicked upstairs and and it and it was allowed and TNG was allowed to establish its own identity. That's when it became the the revered cla the was able to become the revered classic that it is. And in that in that same vein, as long as as long as Mi as long as a character like Miles or even some of the other Spider heroes that they that they've tried to push o over the last few years are just a slightly different version of Spider Man, with this with the same powers, with the same motifs, with the same gimmicks, with the same rogues gallery, none of them are going to be able to r are going to be able to establish their own identity. That's that's true, and another thing that I was sort of thinking about is I'm I'm thinking over the, the history of Spider-Man and sort of how we got to the popularity of today is we haven't experienced like we we are experiencing or at least starting to hit the tail end at least I think personally of the movie superhero boom. Now. The last time that we had a big boom in popularity for comic books was the 1990s. Mm -hmm. Have a look at what else was put out during that time. You had the very excellent X-Men cartoon of 1992. Mm -hmm. you, you had the amazing Spider-Man ad adaptation in 1994. You had a lot of shows back then, especially animated shows, that brought these characters to kids and, and mainstream attention through other medium. Mm -hmm. We, outside of Into the Spider-Verse, we haven't seen Miles in anything yet. There's been no big push to, to bring him in to any of the, uh, the Sony movies. You know, the idea that we could have had Miles in, um, in No Way Home could have been a great boost to the character. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had, over the last probably 10 years alone, we've had at least two different Spider-Man series, but neither of them had Miles in it. So, again, it, I, I go back to marketing and business 101 is that they need to have enough faith in the character to get him out there into other mediums just so the character might have a chance of gaining in popularity because a lot of people might not start with the comic books. I know I didn't. Believe it or not, like, I didn't start collecting Spider-Man until probably 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Before that, my biggest influence of Spider-Man was either the video games or the animated series from 94. So maybe try taking a risk and putting, let, let you know, Marvel go and do their deal with Disney because, you know, Disney loves putting just about everything out and oversaturation these days. And do a Miles Morales cartoon series. You know, have it be uh, his, his origin story and then create some new villains for him or have him face down those like, like Screwball and stuff like that on the show. Mm -hmm. Get him out there in other media. In the, in the next Marvel film, since they're going back to the Into the Spider-Verse, make sure that he is still the main character. Maybe even look at the next, the live action one, because we're not done with the live actions Spider Man yet. Mm -hmm. Have him appear and we, we, we worked into the movies. If they're going to rely on just the comic books to try and sell the character, the character's never going to sell. Mm -hmm. Diversify your portfolio and success will come. Very, very much so, and I think I think that provides a good a good coda for to end to end off on this particular adventure with within the Geek Watch. We will be we'll be back here with a not not quite a reconstruction, but a very interesting experiment in in about a week's time. 
and of course, and of course, I've got, of course, I've got no short, no shortage of in of interviews that'll be that'll be seen here that'll be seen here on the sh on the um, open bar open bar that we have. And once again, I'd like to give a sincere thanks to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then. On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, and join the watch. <laughs>